when people say they don't make movies like that anymore, they're talking about movies like this. If any country could make wild, extreme movies that keep you glued to the screen for 70 minutes, it's obviously Japan. Now, on this channel, I've looked at a lot of wild Japanese movies. The Lust of the Dead series, Attack Girl Swim Team vs. The Undead, The Missing series, Scissor Dick, and My Chan's Daily Life. My Chan's Daily Life was pretty full on, but that was from 2014. The movie that we're looking at in this video is from 1986, and it's part of a very odd series of films from the same director. Hi, I'm Artie Dans, and welcome to this video where, together, we're going to take a look at the movie Entrails of a Beautiful Woman. Firstly, let's check out what this film is about. Now, a bit of a warning, there are some spoilers in this section, but considering the type of movie this is, it's probably not a big deal. But anyway, proceed with caution. A young girl is brutally raped by a gang of low-level Yakuza after she tries to expose their human trafficking ring that sold her sister. They forcibly inject her with a new designer drug called Angel Rain, designed to heighten her pleasure. Naked and beaten up, she stumbles to the aquarium clinic, where a psychologist attempts to help her. Delirious, the young girl tells her the whole story of what happened, including names, and then jumps off the roof of the building. Armed with this information and with a thirst for revenge, the psychologist honey traps one of the Yakuza gangsters and hypnotizes him into attacking his fellow gangsters. But the gangsters end up setting a trap for her. She gets kidnapped and also brutally raped, and they inject her with Angel Rain as well. However, she overdoses and dies in the same room as the dismembered body of the man she honey trapped. On the way to dispose her body, one of the gangsters pulls over to pee, but somehow her body comes back to life. Now, when aggravated or turned on, she morphs into a toxic Avenger-style monster with no skin and both sexual organs, including a man member with teeth, and finishes off her quest for revenge, as well as finding an endless source of drugs to keep her as high as a kite. Wow. Just wow. I didn't make any of that up. That's actually what happens in this film. And I haven't even told you everything. There's some stuff that's definitely not YouTube friendly to show you. If you're a fan of schlocky American trauma films and Cat 3 Nasties from Hong Kong, then there's a lot here for you to enjoy. The three main women in the film all have lengthy nude scenes and various degrees of explicitness, including one lady who gets her fingers all the way up in there and then spreads the juices all over a man's face. This is like Lust of the Dead, but condensed into a 70 minute movie, and all the sex scenes seem to have a very unexpected twist. A rape scene will turn into a female in control scene. Another one ends in glorious fashion when the psychologist's dead alter ego monster takes over and sits on a guy's face, suffocating him to death, and that's after the monster uses its tentacle-like phallus with teeth to completely shred a woman's insides. So if it's sex that you want, you get it by the bucket loads here and you won't be disappointed. But what about the gore? Because this is advertised as a horror film. Well, putting the stuff that happens in the first half aside, it takes until about the halfway point of the film before gore hounds get something to truly be satisfied with. And there are a couple of gory scenes, even by modern standards. And the best part is that you realize that being a film from 1986, all the effects are practical. Practical effects don't always work in this film, such as the scene where the psychologist turns into the monster, and it's this strangely edited footage where we see her skin being blown off camera by some strong wind. It's quite humorous more than anything else. Hmm, now let's go back to the gore, because that's worth talking about. One guy gets hilariously chopped up, and in true 80s style, it is so over the top. The rubber limbs are so obvious, but that doesn't mean you can't enjoy it. But the skinning of the Yakuza? Now that's just something else. Now we don't see the skinning, but you definitely see the characters walk around with the skin during yet another one of the movie's numerous sex scenes. And then of course, there's the monster. Now I was pretty sure I was paying a lot of attention while watching the film, but I really don't understand how the psychologist ended up with that type of end form. The gangster who's transporting her dead body, and the dead body of the dude they chopped up into little pieces, is the first to feel the monster's wrath. And I think it's something to do with when she reawakens from death and her body melts with the dead body parts of the other guy. I don't know. 
I just was hoping to see more boobs. The transformation reminded me of Toxic Avenger, but on re-looking at Toxie, they don't really look anything alike. And I mean the end form, not the actual transformation. The actual transformation reminds me of the game Altered Beast when the human changes into a beast. Crazy thought, but you don't think this is where Sega got that idea from, do you? They couldn't have done that, right? All up, the movie is a little fun time waster that reminds me of a time when movies didn't hold back, not afraid to offend anyone. The movie isn't without its own list of issues though, with quite a few out of focus or slowly focusing shots in the movie that really stick out. The soundtrack is also mono, but that's 80s Japan for you, and I doubt the filmmakers thought about super surround sound systems of the future at the time they were pumping this film out. Also, a big one, but the movie makes no sense. No police ever get involved, considering some of the violence that takes place in the film. Now that's a weird one. Also, the Yakuza seem to be either really smart or really stupid. And one of the women in this film is always incredibly haunt. You get it. So overall, entrails of a beautiful woman. Is it worth it? Hell yeah. If you've watched a lot of the videos on my channel, then this is the perfect recommendation for you. You're welcome. If you have seen it though, what did you think of it? Thank you for watching this video. Please press the like button if you enjoyed it and subscribe to catch my next video.